Okay, this is just going to be an ordinary episode of Quackaholics Anonymous. Uh, I haven't given up on my uh, subtle mind manipulation series uh, as of yet, but a different uh, different train of thought was going through my head this week when I was thinking about what I might want to talk about, and I happened to get a day off, <laughs> which is kind of rare, even though uh, it was kind of starting to slow down a little bit with, from the busy workload. Uh, but I was thinking about the way that... Uh, Oftentimes, when you point out uh, some of the more vile behavior that takes place among old timers and gurus and Quackaholics Anonymous members in general, uh, you're often met with a rebuttal uh, from a lot of people that will say something like, Well, who are you to judge? Now, it's really interesting that that used to actually. Uh, be a phrase that would give me a momentary pause, but what it what it really does is it elicits a, an emotional response from you, where you don't have time to rationally think through and logically uh, come back at them. Because if you're pointing out something really vile and you're upset and you're outraged, and someone says, "Well, who are you to judge?" Uh, you're not gonna. Uh, it's gonna kind of make you even more angry and more outraged. But the truth of the matter is, and uh, the only reason I was able to figure this out is because I wasn't I wasn't actually angry when I was thinking about this, but when you answer to someone with, who are you to judge, you are in fact making a judgment about that person. Uh, you're saying that they don't have a qualification to have an opinion on anything, and therefore you yourself are making a judgment, so you, it's a self-refuting statement. But I want to examine that a little bit closer. Uh, in this particular video because I was thinking about the fact that the only time you hear who are you to judge uh, is only when it is in regards to you know old timers and gurus who uh, are engaging in really vile behavior uh, you don't hear that when it's applying to someone who's actively drinking I mean AA is quite judgmental to people who are drinking or relapsing uh, do I need to reiterate about the whole uh, by the grace of God when someone is suffering? I mean, that sounds pretty judgmental to me. Uh, or the idea of some have to die so that others can live, that sounds pretty profoundly, harshly uh, judging uh, from anybody's book, I think. Uh, in fact, I don't think you can get more judgmental uh, than to take the value of someone's life and say their death is uh, a testimony to how great you are. In fact, AA is a very judgmental organization uh, in general. I was looking through uh, one of the archives uh, for the Armage Papers website. I don't think it's officially online again at the moment. I'm not sure of exactly what happened to it, but uh, luckily there's a there's an archive version of it that I was able to look through online. And uh, there's one of the better. Well, all of his all of his write ups are pretty pretty good, but one of the ones I liked, it was one of the first ones I think I ever looked at by him, was that uh, page is called the Us Stupid Drunks Conspiracy. And it, it was something I hadn't thought about before at the time when I was a good, you know, indoctrinated cult member in AA, you know, uh, is the belittling and demeaning and judgmental way that they talk about alcoholics or, you know, or drug addicts, or however you want to phrase it, or people with addiction problems, uh, they paint this really ugly picture throughout their literature and throughout their big book, you know, selfish in the extreme. And they act like that, you know, with just the most base human beings that, uh, you know, that, that have no redeeming qualities about us whatsoever, unless, of course, magically uh, we give ourselves over to the phony cult religion of Bill W. But I was actually wanting to do a thought experiment. Uh, it's not really much of a thought experiment. It doesn't require a whole lot of critical thinking, but it's just a, a good example of how delusional uh, the whole entire thing is that gives members a pass to do whatever they, do, they like, uh, to get away with whatever kind of vile behaviors uh, that they're engaging in actively. And they hide behind, well, who are you to judge? Only God can judge our conduct, and blah, 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 blah. But they don't mind judging you if you're, say, if you had a bottle of vodka the night before, they, would, they wouldn't hesitate to roll out the judgment on you then. Uh, go to a meeting and say you're struggling with your addiction and see how judgmental it all is. All that tolerance that they talk about goes right out the window. And, of course, like a lot of religious fanatics do, and AA is most assuredly a religion, 
uh, they'll say something like, well, you know, you say I'm being harsh, and you say I'm being mean, but I'm just telling the truth because the big book says so. How convenient for these fuckers, you know, to be able to use uh, whenever you need a book uh, written by men to push some absolutist dogma and to use it for as a tool for being a bullying, uh, no good son of a bitch, uh, that shows how small-minded you really are, that's showing that you need some kind of uh, source to justify your idealized aggression, and because you've got a big book uh, back in you, then it must be okay. Uh, but of course, the program does throw out rational thinking, and it does throw out uh, any real concept of morality. You know, it's really comical to me how many of these people talk about morality uh, when they're the most immoral people uh, that I've ever encountered. Now, of course, anybody who knows me personally knows that I don't have a, uh, a really rigid idea about morality. I've said it before, I'm not no Puritan, and I'm certainly not no, uh, no cave-dwelling monk, you know, that denies himself all pleasures. Uh, even though AA tries to claim that that's what you're supposed to be striving for, yet none of them engage in it. However, I want to... I just want to ask this one question. It's a real-life example. In fact, I'll, I'll uh, ask a couple of them here with a real-life example here. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that you don't know a guy personally. I do know the guy personally, but I'm just going to ask you, hypothetically speaking, let's say you meet a man, and he's a guy, he's never had a drinking problem, uh, big drug dealer, big con artist, big thief, uh, He's a guy that walked away from his kids, uh, his two oldest kids when they were little, never paid a penny in child support to them, has never seen them hardly, and when he does see them, he treats them like garbage and is planning on cutting them out of, uh, of his will, last living will and testimony. You're with me so far. A guy that knows two of his oldest kids suffer with drug addiction, uh, yet he doesn't have any problem buying food stamps from them to... Uh, so they can, you know, continue in their addictions, pretends pretty much that they don't exist. Uh, and let's go further and say that this guy cozied up to a senile aunt, a family member who was dying, uh, so he could cheat everybody else in the family out of their will. And let's say that's how he managed to inherit his property, and let's say that's how he managed to inherit a lot of money. And let's say he told his two oldest kids that he would pay them back what he owed them for that. He never gave them a penny. And let's say that uh, this is a guy that goes to meetings and talks about uh, God's will for him today is what he's doing. This is a guy that, know, that buys food stamps off of people who are hopelessly addicted and 13 steps newcomers. This is a guy that got a girl out of a treatment center uh, and had her released under his care with some kind of weird phony manipulation thing he had going on with the court systems. This is a guy that stole all of her money while she was living with him and threw her out on the streets when she wouldn't uh, pay her rent by sleeping with him. This is a guy that's uh, engaged in uh, active theft and active con games and many other uh, things I could keep on going with. Now, the question I would have to ask you this, if you knew such a person, if you knew such a person that would lie to you to your face, that would steal from you when you're drunk, that would bully you when you're down, that would push around a man who's too intoxicated to defend himself, that would have a man arrested, that would lie on a man, too, after he had him arrested, that would steal money from a man's family. Uh, if you knew a man with a background like what I've just described, and you knew a man that's done these things, is there any way, shape, form, or fashion that you could uh, possibly uh, describe that person as what, you, uh, a good person? I mean, is there any is there any organization on earth that would that would say, well, he's just a sick individual. You can't judge him. Is there any organization that would hold a man like that in high regards just because he's got a double digit sobriety date? Is there any organization that would make excuses for somebody like that that would knowingly protect them in meetings when they know that that person uh, preys on vulnerable newcomers, both sponsors and sponsees, uh, that? Uh, call Sponsy's families behind their back just to sow discord and create more disturbance and more trouble. Is there anybody out there that would possibly want to defend such an individual as being spiritual? Is there anybody that would want to defend such an individual as living in the grace of God? 
I know I would like to think, hopefully, no sane, rational human being could possibly want to take up a banner for such an individual and defend them as a good person. I would like to think that anybody would have enough presence of mind to say, now that's pretty much his, that's pretty much the bottom of the barrel when it comes to being low down. And yet, <clears throat> you have an organization that would protect such an individual and say, well, he's been sober for a very long time. He's had uh, 20 years in the program. He knows how to say all the right things in meetings. After all, who are you to judge? You're just a drunk, right? I could name you a couple of more examples like that, but let me go further with this. Let me ask you this. Would you trust that man with your wallet? Would you trust that man alone with your children? Would you trust that man with anything that was secure to you and you were dear to you? Would you trust that man to talk to your own family, knowing that he'll habitually lie just to create just to create discord so he can laugh about it behind their backs? I don't think you would. I don't think anybody in any honest sense would. Now, of course, the thing that disturbs me the most about this is there are people in Alcoholics Anonymous that actually know about this type of behavior uh, that will defend that, that will say, well, we're all sick. Uh, who are you to judge anybody? How can you possibly judge him? You know, uh, you're not such a good person yourself. You're pretty shitty, too. You know, you notice how they have this double standard where anybody who's a drinker or anybody who's a relapser or anybody who's really not in with the in crowd is so beneath them that he can't even raise his voice in outrage about things that he sees going on without being asked, who are you to judge? Now, it's perfectly fine for the same individual, let's just say, for the sake of argument, to sit in a meeting and say, some have to die so that I can sit here and live. It's perfectly fine for this individual to say, well, you know, uh, not all of us get sober, and, you know, not all of us are in the grace of God. Uh, it's perfectly fine for him to make judgment calls like that, but it's not okay for anybody to critique or criticize this. Now, for the people who would defend this type of behavior, there's only three things I can possibly see as a possible outline or a possible scenario. One is you're either just as big of a piece of shit as he is. That's one uh, example I could think of, which I, given the type of characters of people that I've encountered in AA, I would think that that's likely the case. Uh, the other one is you're so brainwashed by the AA cult that you actually believe these old timers, that these gurus, that these people that stand up and, and pretend that they were cut above all the rest of the members are, are somehow untouchable. Uh, that's another option that I can think of. Or that you're uh, just so unfeeling and, un and callous that you can't possibly identify with the amount of damage that somebody like that has inflicted upon countless people during their time in the Alcoholics Anonymous program. And then we're only talking about one asshole. We're not talking about uh, the millions and millions of horror stories that I've heard. Uh, we're not talking about uh, other things that I've even seen. I'm giving you one example of one piece of shit. Uh, I'm giving you just that one example of a person that's actually held up as some high standard uh, in high regard because they have a sobriety date that goes back to the 1980s and uh, are somehow above reproach and somehow above judgment. Uh, and of course, you know, a lot of the times AA members will say, well, look at what you've done in your past. Uh, I've never done anything remotely close to that. Uh, when it comes to cheating people out of money, I can honestly say I never have done that. When it comes to uh, uh, openly lying to someone's face so I can fuck them over for the sheer laughter and pleasure of it, I can honestly say I've never done that either. I can honestly say that I don't believe that I would uh, knowingly go to meetings and run a scam where I would buy food stamps off of drug addicts. Uh, and uh, sit in a meeting with a straight face and say it's, it's by the grace of God that I sit there. I can honestly say that I haven't ever done anything remotely even close to that. You know, sure, I've been, uh, I've been drunk a lot in my life, and sure, I've made my fair share of egregious mistakes, but I've never been uh, openly, knowingly malicious towards anyone. Uh, and yet, somehow, I'm supposed to believe that I'm somehow in the same category as that piece of shit uh, because I'm an alcoholic. I find that really disturbing. What I find even more disturbing about that is how many people will... I used to hear some of the most god-awful confessions in meetings, and I would hear the most god-awful things said, and people would laugh, and people would shrug, and people would, you know, brush it off. 
uh, because AA turns uh, the most vile aspects of human nature and it puts it on a pedestal and it makes it a virtue, you know. I've even heard people defend Bill W's abhorrent uh, behavior and say stuff like, well, isn't that wonderful? I mean, that proves even Bill W could get sober. That means we could get sober too. Which is, uh, I, I won't even try to touch in this video why that's so logically flawed, why that's so fucking ridiculous, why that doesn't even make any coherent sense to say that you're going to hold up uh, as some kind of icon, as some kind of symbol of perfection, as some kind of symbol of spirituality, uh, an utter con artist and an utter scam artist and a taker and a liar and a manipulator and say it's a good thing. I mean, can you think of any other organization on earth that would actually actively promote uh, this type of behavior is being something not only acceptable, but in some way kind of admirable. You know, it, 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 another thing that, that uh, I was thinking about when I was paging through the Us Stupid Drunks conspiracy, conspiracy page, <coughs> had to cough there, um, is that you notice the, uh, the way that they've got it set up where uh, the little elite ruling class, the little gurus, the, the, the people that, that pretty much... Uh, behave like there's some kind of royalty uh, in the rooms of Quackaholics Anonymous. They've got it set up to where uh, they can criticize you all they want. They can get you off your feet uh, in the way you think, in the way you formulate, in the way you, you know, uh, all they want. They can beat you down. They can try to, what they call, crush your ego, which is, in truth, just an excuse for more uh, sadistic torture, mental sadistic torture. Uh, they have free reign and a free pass to do all of that, but you don't have any right uh, in those meetings to speak up or say anything against it. If you do, of course, you'll be met with snickers and sneers, and you'll be told that you're sick, and you'll be, be told that you are a sick alcoholic, and, and after all, who are you to judge? And really and truly, what is, what is behind that whole who are you to judge narrative anyway? What it's really saying is... Uh, underneath the surface of it all is, is that people who go a long time without a drink, or claim to, I might add, claim to, because I'm not so convinced any of those people have any length of any real time, unless they're like this guy I was talking about at the beginning of the video, they never had a drinking problem to begin with, they were just a drug dealer that got in legal trouble and went to AA. Uh, but if you've got a lot of time, supposed times without a drink, you're above the law, you're above reproach, you can engage in any kind of behavior you want to and not be held accountable for it. And yet Quackaholics Anonymous members will often sit around and say, I need someone who's going to call me out, I need someone who's going to, uh, uh, I can be held accountable to. Well, you know, if that type of scum is the type of scum that I'm supposed to be held accountable to, I think I would prefer to... Uh, to actually get drunk and die. But luckily, luckily, uh, after being away from them for as long a period of time as I've been away from them, I found out that their little dichotomy of it's either our way or no way at all is blatantly false. In fact, I actually want to do a whole video on their absolutes where they talk about honesty, open-mindedness, purity, and all of that other horse shit and debunk every bit of it. But I think the funniest part about that, and I've said it before in videos, is they talk about honesty, uh, rigorous honesty, and it's the most dishonest bunch of people there are. It's the only thing honest about uh, AA is you're allowed to self-deprecate yourself. You're allowed to, uh, to bracket yourself into some kind of horrifying stereotype of what an alcoholic should be. Uh, and you're also supposed to... Uh, you know, give all the credit to supposedly God the program for for what exactly? Because these people never do change. They never do seem to have any spiritual experiences. They whine and they blabber about progress all the time. But these are people that some of them are claiming 20 and 30 years that some of them that I've seen uh, with even longer that are still engaging in, in, the, in, these, in these practices and still going on about progress. Well, I mean, you know, in some things, there's, there's no such thing as progress. I mean, you either do it or you don't. You know, the same individual I was talking about said he had to work on his lying and his stealing. Well, I mean, working on stealing is, is, is kind of a, an oxymoron. You either steal or you don't. I mean, you either treat people like shit or you don't. But in some situations, especially in an organization that glorifies sick behavior, that holds up sick behavior as some kind of virtue, as some kind of standard that you want to live up to. 
uh, there's no way or no room for self-improvement. And of course, if you're angry about anything that you see in there like that, and if you're upset about anything you see in there like that, then you're told that you're just sick, that you're it's your disease talking, that you're in denial, uh, and all the other little, uh, all the other little, you know what I mean, the little one-point uh, cliche thought-stopping answers to everything. You know, there's something mysterious about a bunch of people that have an answer for everything. One little one-word sentence answer that would take hours and hours to, uh, it seems like, to fully uh, overturn. You know, I, I don't remember who said it, but... Uh, I remember reading somewhere someone said demagoguery flourishes when you can say in a few simple sentences what well, would take pages to uh, go back and overturn. It's something that I think that they're actually uh, masters at manipulation with. Uh, I'll say this, this is going to be kind of shorter than usual for me, but I spent 12 years of my life, 12 years of my life in AA stuffing my anchor. Uh, and being told that I had a part in all of it and was to blame for everything, that somehow or the other I had stepped on the toes of my fellows and I retaliated, and therefore I had no reason to ever have justified anger. I spent 12 years being judged, being told that I was just going to have to die drunk, uh, watching thieves and con artists manipulate both myself and the newcomers, uh, and then proclaiming from these very same con artists and liars and scam artists and lowlife uh, vermin uh, that it was by God's grace they were getting away with this and telling me that I was just insane and incapable of being honest because I disliked it. I spent over a decade being run over, trampled on, and everything in between. And still, still, I didn't have it as bad as some people had it in there. I've seen people that turned out in far worse places. So yeah, I'm pretty pissed off and I'm angry and I'm outraged that this level of abuse continues and that it's in our courts and our treatment centers and pushed everywhere in the mainstream as some sort of magical cure-all solution to addiction problems. So I admit to being very hostile to AA and I have zero desire to be to sugarcoat it, to be nice about it, to be pleasant about it uh, to anyone. I don't. I felt that I've spent enough time in my life here in their side and let and letting them dominate. Uh, my life and the lives of many others, and I feel it's kind of time to turn the tables, you know, on it. I get a little bit uh, irritated uh, with some people. There was someone in my actual real world life uh, that was saying something about, you know, you need to let go of the anger. You need to, you know, you, you don't want to just seek the company of misery. And, you know, these are the same people that always have all this fucking unwanted good advice that I didn't even ask for, which I found out, by the way, I don't need that in my life either. Uh, but there are some things in life that uh, you have a right to be angry about. You know, it took me years after uh, of being in AA and listening to that crap day in and day out. And somewhere along the way, I realized that, you know what, I've got a right to be angry. Anger is a normal human emotion. It's not dangerous for alcoholics. It's not a, a dubious luxury that we cannot afford. I mean, when injustice happens in the world, when the scum of the earth get away with... Uh, exploiting the innocent, you're supposed to be angry. It's what makes you a fucking human being to be angry uh, about that. And uh, this is, I actually summed up all the talking points I had on my little notes over there on the side of my laptop there, so I guess I'll conclude on that one. Like I said, I'll get back to uh, subtle mind manipulation tactics of Crocoholics Anonymous next week, but uh, that's going to be uh, hopefully next week. I hope I don't get busy again in another two, three weeks go by. But anyway, uh, see you guys soon.